Hi, and welcome back to Wondering Wild. It's Wild Wednesday, and we're going to talk all about the Crown of Thorns Starfish. Okay, guys, this is the third, yes, count it, third time we have recorded this video. So here's to hoping this one, this one sticks. If not, I, I vote this animal's cursed. Yeah, I will have to just do another animal. It's the only other option. All right, guys. So the crown of thorns starfish is a larger starfish species with multiple arms that feeds mostly on hard coral polyps. Now, this starfish got its name from its obvious thorny appearance and its resemblance to the biblical crown of thorns. This particular starfish has a wide Indo-Pacific distribution, meaning it's pretty much found all along tropical latitudes all over the globe, from the Red Sea to off the coast of Central America to the Pacific. However, it's most densely found near Australia. Fundamentally, this starfish has the same body makeup as any starfish. It has a central body disc with radiating arms. However, the crown of thorn starfish has some special characteristics that make it unique. First off, that central body disc actually takes up more of its body mass than its arms, which is unique for starfish. Plus, it has those thorns or spines that are actually venomous. Its legs are also prehensile, meaning they can support weight, as well as quite flexible despite bite the thorny, solid look that this starfish has. Now, this flexibility actually allows the crown of thorns starfish to mold around the coral polyps that it feeds upon. An adult crown of thorns starfish usually ranges from about 10 inches in diameter to 15 inches in diameter. And they can have anywhere from 5 to 21 arms. As far as color goes, they're usually more subdued colors like a gray or a brown. However, in parts of their wide range, they can be in bright, garish colors to kind of advertise their toxicity. This toxicity comes from saponins. Now, saponins, or more specifically, astrosaponins, are found in a lot of starfish species. However, in the crown of thorn starfish species, it's found in those thorns. These saponins are the toxins that cause the pain that you would feel if you were to step on a crown of thorn starfish. Now, this starfish does not have a mechanism for injecting its venom. Instead, when you step on it or come in contact with it, it leaves tissue behind. The tissue that it leaves behind contains the saponins, and that's what causes, for example, in humans, a sharp stabbing pain that starts immediately and lasts for hours, as well as profuse bleeding because it acts as a blood thinner, and swelling which can last up to two weeks. Now even though this is hugely uncomfortable and no one would want to experience it, it's not usually deadly. Now the adult crown of thorns starfish is a carnivorous predator. Like I said, it feeds on the hard stony coral polyps. And the way it does this is that it will go over the coral polyp that it's selected and it secretes its digestive juices. These juices then break down the coral and then the crown of thorn starfish can absorb the nutrients from that coral. This may seem like a slow process, but in all reality, one adult crown of thorn starfish can consume up to 65 square feet of coral in an entire year. Now, these starfish do show preferences in the corals that they eat. They tend to prefer branched or flat table-shaped corals instead of the more round corals, and that may just be due to ease of access. We're not really sure. For this reason, the crown of thorn starfish is actually quite important to its ecosystem. They act to increase biodiversity by constantly changing the makeup of a coral reef. When there's one or two per reef, they're not going to consume enough that the reef can't keep up with this loss. In all reality, the reef is still growing at a much higher rate than it's losing coral to these starfish. So they're just helping increase biodiversity. However, recently we've tend to have kind of high densities of these starfish and these kind of outbreaks of these starfish can be quite detrimental to a reef because when in mass they can take out large areas of coral which the reef can't create fast enough to keep up with. 
This, in conjunction with other things such as coral bleaching can cause huge damage to some of our reefs, especially ones like the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. Now, we really aren't sure what is causing these outbreaks of the crown of thorns starfish, and they don't have a lot of predators. They actually only have a couple that we've ever even known of, such as a pufferfish species, a triggerfish species, and one species of painted shrimp. Now, that means we don't know how to control their population or why their population is skyrocketing. Is there some sort of control mechanism that's been taken out of the system? And we don't know if that's the case or what control mechanism was taken out. And so they're doing research to find this out. As far as coral bleaching goes, this is a larger problem that is already damaging these reefs. And coral bleaching is due to ocean acidification which is caused by pollution and carbon emissions. So that's a really big problem added to a smaller yet still big problem causing a huge problem to some of our reefs. Now, it's important to remember the crown of thorns starfish does serve a purpose and it does deserve to be here. However, we need to find out what's changed in the ecosystem that's allowing them to be overpopulated and cause some issues. If you're interested in these issues, such as coral bleaching and the threats to our coral reefs, I'm going to post a link down in the description box below, along with all of my other sources. And if you have comments or if you have information to add, just put it down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer you, and hopefully we'll get a good discussion going. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the crown of thorns starfish for the third time. And <laughs> as always, stay wild and never stop wondering.